Thanks for joining us on the Bahamian Mathematics YouTube channel. To see more videos just like this, just subscribe, like, and share. In today's video, we will be understanding the Cartesian plane and find x and y coordinates on a grid. Let's see how that works. Consider this first. Here is a triangle. If I asked, where is the triangle located, what answer would you give me? Well, you can say, well, here it is, but that wouldn't be too specific. And so if we wanted to be a little bit more specific as to where the triangle is located, we can give it a description based on something else. And so let's give where the triangle is located based on where the circle is located. How can we get from the circle to the triangle? Well, we can use a number of steps to count from the circle to the rectangle. And if we can only move left and right to get from the circle to the rectangle, which direction would we move first? we would have to move to the right a certain number of steps. And so let's move a certain number of steps to the right. One, two, three, four. We've moved four steps to the right. And we're directly underneath the triangle. Now we need to either move up and down. And so in this case, we will move up a certain number of spaces. Let's count. One, two, three steps, and we're at the triangle. So we've moved three steps up. We move four steps to the right and three steps up from the circle in order to get to the triangle. And so we can use aspects of mathematics that we will know as the Cartesian plane to more specifically locate points. Here is a line that goes from left to right. We're going to call this the x-axis. And here is a line that runs up and down. We will call this the y-axis. And if you notice where they intersect, we will call this the point zero. This will later be known as the origin. We can see that when we draw the x-axis and the y-axis, we have four sections which are known as quadrants. Here is one, two, three, four. We name them quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. We know quad means four. So let's look at the Cartesian plane now. On the x-axis, if we placed markings equal and apart from each other and we labeled them one, two, three, four, and so on, here are the positive numbers on the x-axis. And on the opposite side of that, if we put markings equal distances apart, and we started to label them minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on, these are the negative numbers. If we did the same to the y-axis, and we use the section above the x-axis as our positive numbers, we can start 1, 2, 3, and so on. And if we use the section underneath the x-axis, on the y-axis, we can call those the negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. And so we have positive numbers on the x-axis, and we have positive numbers on the y-axis. We have negative numbers on the x-axis, and negative numbers on the y-axis. If we wanted to identify specifically where our triangle is, we can use an x value and a y value to name the point. And we can write them just like this, in a set of brackets, the x number comes first, then a comma, and then the y value. So let's take a look at where the triangle is. And we will first look to the x-axis. x comes before y in the alphabet. So you can remember you always write the x-axis first. And so here's our triangle. And if we look down to the x-axis, we see the number 5. And we write the number 5 first. And then we look across to the y-axis, and we can see that that stops at the number 4. And so our y value is 4. And so we've named where our triangle is now, specifically, at the point 5, 4. We can also, using a different method, start at 0 and count the number of spaces on the x-axis first and then count the number of spaces on the y-axis next to also give our, the location of our point. And so if we start on the x-axis, if we start at 0 and we go all the way over, we can see that that stops at 5, which is right underneath the triangle. And so we have gone over 5 spaces. That's our 5. And if we start back at 0 and we count the number of spaces up the y-axis, we can see that it also stops at 4, which is right across from where the triangle is. So we've gone up four spaces. And here's our number four. And so our point is located at five comma four. And so let's look at the rule. When we want to write an ordered pair, here are the steps. When we are given a point on a graph, 
and we want to know where it's located. We can use these steps. First, locate the x-axis and write that coordinate first. And so if we look at point E where the little x is, if we look at the x-axis, here is minus 7, that is our x value. Step 2 is to locate the y-axis and then write that coordinate second. So here's the y-axis. And if I go across, there is the 6. That's a positive 6, and so my y value is 6. And so E is located at the point minus 7, comma, 6. What happens when we are given an ordered pair and we want to find out where to place the point on the graph? And here are the steps. When we are given an ordered pair, like 3 minus 5, where is that point? Which quadrant does that appear in? Is it over here, down here? How do we know where to begin? The first step is we locate the x-axis and we identify the x-value. So here's the x-axis. And the first x-value is 3. So where's the positive 3 on this x-axis? Here it is. And step 2, we locate the y-axis and identify the y-value. So here's the y-axis. The y value is minus 5, and so I find minus 5, here it is. And step 3 says mark a small x at the point where the two values intersect. Well, if we go to 3 and we draw a line, and we go to minus 5 on the y axis and we draw a line, we can see where they intersect right here. And that is the point A, located at 3 minus 5. And now it's quiz time. Let's see if you can answer these questions in five seconds or less. Give the coordinates of point E. Time's up. The answer is 2, 6. We can see that E, if we look down to the x-axis, is at 2. And then if we go across to the y-axis, there is a 6. So E is at 2, 6. Question 2. What letter is at the point 0, 6? Time's up. The answer is F. 0, that is the x value, and here is the x value of 0. And the 6 is the y value. And if we look on the y axis, we can see here is 6. And that is where the F is located. Question 3. Give the coordinates of point U. Time's up. U is located at minus 3, minus 4. We can see if we go up to the x-axis, between the minus 2 and the minus 4 is minus 3. And then if we go to the y-axis, here is minus 4. Question 4. What letter is at the point 4, minus 4? Time's up. The answer is N. Let's look at the first number, which is the X value, which is 4. So if I go to the X axis, here is the 4. That's a positive 4. And then the second value is the Y value, which is minus 4. So if we look on the Y axis, minus 4 is located here. And where they intersect is N. Last question. Give the coordinates of point D. Time's up. We can see that D is in quadrant 3, where values, both values, X and Y values, are negative. So the answer is minus 5, minus 7. Here's D. If we go to the X axis, between minus 4 and minus 6 is minus 5. And if we go to the Y axis, between minus 6 and minus 8 is minus 7. And now you've solved the mystery of understanding the Cartesian plane. Well done.